hot, very, very hot. Okay, hey guys, what's up, what's going on? If you're new here, my name is Britt and I am the vegan food blogger behind The Banana Diaries and also the video creator behind The Banana Diaries channel. So today we're gonna to be talking about a little bit of a late summer, fall meal prep situation. So regardless of whether you work from home or not, it's kind of stressful to make your meals all the time, you know, every single day right before you're about to eat. I'm a little bit of a lazy person. I really like to know that there's something in the fridge that I can just easily grab and go, or I can just quickly put together for a healthy meal that's really satiating and really satisfying as well, and also delicious. I don't think that meal prepping and eating healthy or eating vegan has to be boring and stuff. We really need to squash those beliefs, so I'm hoping that this video will help with that. kind of meal prep. A lot of people think that meal prepping is this whole extensive process, which it can be. I personally am not on that boat because I don't have the space in my fridge with all of my baked good treats that I make, nor do I have the patience to give my time for four hours on a Sunday where I'd rather, you know, be cleaning or catching up with family or outside, it's still beautiful outside. I want to show you more of a realistic meal prep because I know there are a bunch of videos that look really, really like impressive and stuff. And maybe my video isn't that impressive, but I'm aiming for more realistic than impressive. I'd rather like show you something that you could take home with you rather than something that might steer you away from meal prepping altogether. as simple as just slicing some veggies at the beginning of the week if you are a person that loves to cook every single day or it can be actually making recipes. So how I typically meal prep is I like to choose one recipe that I'm going to use as the focus of the week. So it'll be, you know, for instance, stuffed quinoa peppers or it'll be um, my vegan lasagna or it'll be as what we're making today, my butternut squash mac and cheese, which is made from a chickpea pasta. So you get your protein in there, you have your veggies. Um, you can add in some greens as well on the side and it's super easy. It's a great dinner. And then I also like to prep a breakfast at the beginning of the week if I'm not doing my oatmeal, which I do love every now and then. But as we're changing seasons, I feel like I've done that a lot. So we're switching gears a little bit. I prepped my healthy vegan chocolate granola this week and it's absolutely delicious. I'm so obsessed. I'm also gonna show you a few different sides that I will have for lunch and also add to dinner as well. So you can really knock out breakfast, lunch, and dinner with this really simple, really easy meal prep. I'm also gonna show you guys how to time this correctly. So with the recipes that I'm making this week, I'm gonna show you how I plan it so that I'm not wasting any pocket of time so that I can just get this done as quickly as possible because that's always the goal is that I just wanna you know get this done so I know I've got food ready to go and I can go enjoy my weekend because we work all week and sometimes on the weekend, I will admit I work weekends, but you know, I'm trying to enjoy a little bit of a break. But we're first going to start by making the roasted butternut squash for the butternut squash mac and cheese. And then I'm gonna also make some quinoa and lentil instant pot style, as well as chop some zucchini, roast some sweet potatoes, and then have the granola as well. So without further ado, let's jump right in. <laughs> So we're first going to start by roasting the butternut squash and carrots to make the butternut squash dairy-free cheese sauce. So you can buy a whole butternut squash, but I actually couldn't find them in stores just yet, so I bought some cubed butternut squash and then sliced up some carrots, and you don't have to make them super small slices, just enough so that they'll roast pretty evenly with the butternut squash. Drizzle with a little bit of coconut oil and season with some thyme and sea salt, which all my pantry recommendations are also found down in the guide. But we're going to roast this at about 425 degrees and get our instant pot quinoa and lentils going while we're doing this. So I'm gonna make the quinoa and lentils together. You can use chickpeas or lentils or whichever bean that you'd like. Um, we're just adding in some water here and a little bit of sea salt as well to give it a bit of flavor. I have a whole quinoa instant pot recipe video for you guys, so I'm gonna link that up above. But basically you're gonna use the pressure cook setting and then set it to a few minutes and then press start. And while the quinoa and lentils are cooking, we are going to slice some zucchini. So I'm not gonna cook the zucchini. This is what I'm gonna leave uncooked, so I'll cook it throughout the week. You can also spiralize it or chop it into different shapes, whatever you like. Sometimes I like to chop it into a few different shapes to keep it kind of fun during the week. But we'll just place these in some glass containers and then that actually checks off one part of our meal prep. 
So next up, I'm going to slice the carrots for roasting. So you can actually keep these raw as well, but I actually personally prefer cooked carrots, and I can just add them to a salad for some roasted veggies on a salad um, or any dish that I have throughout the week. And you can heat these up or eat them cold. They're both delicious. And basically, we're just going to toss it kind of like our butternut squash and carrots that we're making for the cheese sauce. So just a little bit of salt, some seasoning, and a little bit of coconut oil. And we're just going to pop that right in the oven while the butternut squash and the carrots are roasting. Around that time our quinoa and lentils should be ready so we're just going to release the pressure and fluff up the quinoa and lentils a little bit. This is truly my favorite way to make quinoa and lentils. I find that it actually yields the best texture. So once it's cooled a little bit we're going to transfer it to another one of our meal prep containers and then this you can just use as you want throughout the week. You can put it on salad, you can add it as a grain to one of your meals, you can put it in a wrap if you want to make a veggie wrap. It's super delicious, super easy to spice up and jazz up throughout the week with different spices, herbs, and seasonings. Next, the end of the roasting, you can actually also make the chocolate granola. I actually already made this, so didn't have to do that, but then the roasted veggies are ready to take out of the oven, so we'll let those cool and we will start to make our pasta. Uh, while those are cooling and getting ready so we can blend it all together. So we're just going to boil up a pot of water and add in the chickpea pasta. You can add any pasta that you'd like. I just personally love chickpea pasta because it is uh, packed with protein and I'm always trying to find different ways to add in protein to my diet. And once the veggies are cool, we're going to add them to a food processor. Add in some oat milk and a little bit of nutritional yeast. Um, also some arrowroot powder and different seasonings like salt, thyme, whatever you have on hand, um, garlic, onion, powder. You can also add in fresh garlic and onion as well. And then we're just going to blend. And I'm actually going to leave this blending so it gets super smooth and I'm going to go back to cooking the pasta. And basically we'll just cook the pasta until it's ready, we'll drain it, and by that time the sauce should be super smooth, super creamy, a little bit gooey because of the arrowroot powder. And then we'll be ready to toss it together with the pasta and then bake it for some baked vegan mac and cheese. So the food processor is one of my favorite kitchen appliances. You can also use a high powered blender, um, but I definitely recommend if you're going to go the food processor route using a bigger blender so that you can fit all the veggies in there because we have about three cups of roasted veggies that we got a puree into a smooth creamy sauce. So just one of my little tips, but as you can see the sauce is super thick. It's so delicious. I could actually just eat it with a spoon, but we're not. We're gonna we're gonna toss it into the pasta. I did save a little bit because it's super good over some roasted veggies or with chips or I'm actually going to be experimenting with a gluten-free vegan pretzel so stay tuned for that but once we have the pasta all tossed in the sauce we're just going to pop this into the oven to bake and at that time we're also going to stick in our sweet potatoes as well and we're just going to roast those for about an hour the pasta will come out before then it'll take about 30 minutes to bake and it's super super good oh my gosh I, I've been loving eating this all week and that that's basically our meal prep. We have everything here. Once the sweet potatoes are done, we'll just take those out as well. And you have meals that you can customize for days. And you can just grab and go. You can eat it cold, you can warm it up, um, you can saute the veggies. So in less than two hours, you have meals that are absolutely delicious, nutrient packed. And in the guide, I'm actually gonna show you how I plan everything out so that you can just get this all done in one fall swoop so that your meal prepping is completely stress-free. All right, and that is about it. Yeah, I'm just gonna wait for the sweet potatoes to finish up baking and then, yeah, that was all done in literally an hour and a half. So start to finish, that's pretty simple. And I also got some photos out of this. So I made the butternut squash mac and cheese that I could also share on the blog. So that also accounts for the time to photograph as well, which is pretty cool. So all this stuff will keep really nicely in the fridge for up to a week. Um, that's why I specifically didn't cook the zucchini because I didn't want it to wilt over time, but the root veggies typically last pretty well. Now, I just want to re reiterate that I also purchased some leafy greens throughout the week. So and all this is just the cooked meal prep or semi not really cooked prepped meal prep. There we go. Eat it. Why are you eating stem first? This is a new food for me. How else should I eat it? I also buy some spinach, some kale, um, get me through the week. And yeah, for other proteins, I typically have a pea protein as well. Um, I have some oats in the cabinet just to keep on hand and stuff if I ever want oatmeal or if I'm making a recipe like my oatmeal chocolate cookies or currently I'm actually enjoying my pumpkin pie bars. 
which I believe will be out by the time that this is live. So I'll also link that down below because I always have a dessert on hand. I guess I don't really meal prep dessert because I always have dessert in my fridge. So that's kind of part of my meal prep, I guess, maybe. If you like to meal prep dessert and you're not a baker, by all means, go ahead and meal prep dessert. If I wasn't a baker and I didn't run baking blog, I would be meal prepping dessert every week. But seeing as I always have desserts on hand, I think I'm good on that front. And yes, I'm going to eat all this food. I might share a little bit with Jared. I know that seems like a lot of food for one person, but I'm a hungry person. I run a lot. I'm also gonna give the link to all the Tupperware containers that I use down in the description box, so be sure to go check that out there. And yeah, let me know what your favorite recipe is. Let me know also what you're meal prepping this week, what you like to personally meal prep. As you can see, I'm a little bit of mix of everything. I hope this video was really helpful. I know that when I first started meal prepping, I felt like I had to do all the things, and now I just do whatever I want and realize that it's okay to be me. Just like with everything else, it's okay to be you. With all that said, I hope that you have a beautiful rest of your day. Remember that you are an incredible human being. You deserve to be here, and I am rooting for you always. I'll see you on the next one. Bye!